Hey guys, Darren Miles, Darren Miles Photography based here in beautiful, sunny Southwest Florida. And I'm gonna call this video, Flirting with Fuji. So those of you who don't know, I've been primarily a Canon, Nikon, lately a little bit of Sony, and a lot of Olympus type photographer. That's what I've been shooting with for the last 12 years. Never really touched Fuji. Um, can't, don't really have a good reason as to why. I just never felt the need to go after Fuji as a camera body. That said, recently it seems that with the advent of the Nikon Z and the Canon EOS R, the desire for me to take a look at Fuji has increased because they've been at, like, like Sony, Fuji's been at mirrorless for a while. And as you probably know, they've been very focused on the APS-C version or APS-C size sensor version of a camera, an area where Sony has done pretty well. So anyway, I reached out to somebody at Fuji and they agreed to let me try out the Fuji X-H1 for 30 days along with the 10 to 24 lens and a flash because I primarily or most often shoot real estate photography and I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to put the X-H1 through the paces and see what I think about it as far as whether I can work it into my workflow or if an APS size sensor would work for me professionally, yada, yada, yada. So anyway, it's my second full day utilizing the X-H1 and I've come away with some good things and some not so good things. Uh, first and foremost, the good things. Color is beautiful. The camera itself feels great in the hand. I find focus to be very fast and very accurate. And I think all that stuff is great. On the not so good things, and by the way, this is just a quick take. This is not a review. It's, this is my first impressions of the camera. On the not so good side, two really big things. Number one, if you've never used a Fuji camera before, I'm just telling you right now, it is a very frustrating and frankly downright bizarre experience if you've never used a Fuji before. I, again, Canon, Nikon, Panasonic, Olympus, etc. I've been using those cameras and those camera bodies for a long time now. And the one thing all those cameras have is a proper mode dial. You know, the dial that says manual, program, shut, uh, shutter, or aperture priority. Well. The Fujis don't have that. It's kind of a weird setup, the way they've actually put this camera together. If you look at it, it almost looks like one of those complicated watches. You know, you have watches that tell time, which is basically like every other camera. And then you have Fuji, which is like the watch that gives you barometric pressure and wind speed and all these crazy like circles and dials and stuff. That's what a Fuji looks like. It's like, where's the clock? It's kind of like when I first got the Fuji, my first question was, okay, how do I operate the camera? Because it had dials and switches and buttons and it didn't have a mode dial. So I'm like, okay, how do I get this thing into manual mode? Needless to say, it's taken a couple of days. It took me about 24 hours literally of fiddling with it and playing with it. I never referenced the manual. I mean, what guy references the manual? But anyway, I never checked the manual and just kept playing with it and finally figured out that if you set the camera a certain way, like one dial to one setting and another dial to another setting, then you can actually use the command dials and the aperture ring on the lens itself to get you into full-blown manual mode, which is great. It took me a while to get there, but I figured it out and now I'm there. The downside is after figuring out how to get into that mode, the command dials on this camera, unlike other cameras, can be depressed. And if they get depressed, it's like pushing them inward. They actually activate a separate, sec a separate secondary function. And in the case of the X-H1, I was using the front command dial for shutter speed. I accidentally depressed it and I switched into ISO. So I was going back and I, I, once I went and figured that out, once that happened, I'm like, oh my God, what did I do? How do I undo this thing from the sh being no longer being shutter, but now being ISO? And needless to say, I also figured that out, but these are nightmarish things that can set you back sometimes for 10 or 15, 20 minutes while you're trying to figure out what the heck is going on with my camera. So I'm kind of getting over those things, but the, the point of this is that if you're, gonna, if you're considering Fuji, be it an X-H1, X-T2, X-T3, whatever, just know that there's a very, 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 very steep learning curve if you've never used one before. Please understand that going in, that's number one. Number two, I'm finding that the battery life is very unsettling because it's very short. 
Well, I would love to be showing you how I'm utilizing the X-H1 right now, but unfortunately I'm using my D750 again because one of the downsides, as I'm learning about the X-H1, one of the downsides is that battery life just isn't all that great, and I'm learning and suffering through that right now. I can get through about three houses on one battery, and that's it. And unfortunately, I didn't request a second battery from Fuji. I only have one. I didn't request the grip from Fuji, so I have one battery and I don't have the ability to charge it when I'm on the road, so I'm kind of stuck. So what ends up happening is I go through three shoots and then I revert to my Nikon D750. Point of all this, as of right now, if I were to get an H X-H1, I would definitely get the grip and or a second battery, um, but all those things put aside, as far as ergonomics, once you get past that steep learning curve, quality of the lenses, quality of the output, thus far, I'm very impressed. I will be posting a few sample images, and this is, again, is not a full-blown review, That'll be coming in the next 20 to 30 days. So right now, I'm just kind of flirting with the X-H1. I think the pros are outweighing the cons, but those cons are pretty important to me. And one of the other big pros, by the way, unlike the Z and the EOS R, the X-H1 has two memory card slots. Very important if you are a professional. So that's where I'm at as of right now. And I will complete this review of the X-H1 in the next two to three weeks, and I will post that video on YouTube. In the meantime, happy shooting and drive safely.